Hey guys, today we're working on an 86 Ford F-150. We're gonna be replacing the electronically controlled carburetor and the old distributor with an HEI distributor and a plain Jane carburetor you can tune with a screwdriver. So, first things first, we're gonna take hair cleaner off and start undoing all the plugs and vacuum lines going to that carburetor. You can see I've kind of got a rat's nest under here. Wires going everywhere, vacuum lines going nowhere. I'm just, it's a, it's terrible, absolutely terrible. So hopefully we can eliminate a lot of the vacuum lines. We can eliminate most of, if not all the wires. We can clean up down here. I'm gonna come back in and clean up the EGR and, um, and smog pump stuff that's still left over. And that should really help just clean out this part of the engine bay, but also make the thing run better. Right now, this carburetor has um, vacuum leaks all over, I think specifically from the throttle shaft, which isn't really a fixable thing unless you put bushings in it. And carburetors nowadays, you can get them for 90 bucks off Amazon. They're pretty much ready to go. You get so rid of that just throttle position sensor. Getting an old carburetor or um, getting a new carburetor off Amazon so and replacing this really thing. Clear things up. You get rid of this solenoid that changes the mixture. You get rid of this, um, that's an anti-dieseling solenoid, doesn't really do anything um, anymore, hardly moves. So this fitting for me was a 5.8, and then this filter is going to end up coming off too, but, um, um, and that one is, I think, an 11 16th. And then with everything unplugged, you got to pull this off. There's a ball in the back for the throttle, so you got to pull that off, and then come straight off so these are the two carbs next to each other i mean they are the exact same thing except we got a block off plate where that solenoid would be we don't have a throttle position sensor we don't have the anti-dieseling solenoid or bracket i mean they're like the exact same carb so if you wanted to you could buy this one and then take these off and put all these sensors and everything back on it but i am not going to do that because there's no reason for me to believe any of these are still working. I mean, I guess it was running, but it was running terribly. It was super rich. It got like 12 miles to gallon, which on a straight six, um, even in the truck, should be getting better than that. So, pretty much the same carburetor. So the next step is this distributor. Make sure to take a lot of pictures when you do this so you get the orientation and everything right, wiring and everything when you put the new one in. I've already unplugged everything from the distributor cap. So next, we don't need this coil anymore because that's uh, basically part of the HEI distributor. And we can just unplug all this. Pull the, I'll pull the coil out first just to get it out of the way. And then I think I'll pull the distributor after that. I also think I'm gonna come in here and replace this gasket because you can see it's weeping pretty bad down there. So to get this coil bracket out, there's a bolt through this top piece, and that is right there. That needs to come all the way out. And then there's two nuts on those studs that bolt the uh, fuel pump in. You just have to loosen those, and then there are slots here. So you can just slide the whole thing up and out. So I'll retighten those nuts. Not that it really matters, but we don't want them falling off. And then um, we'll go ahead pull the distributor. So before you take your distributor off, you should take the cap off and take some pictures of orientation here so that you know kind of where this is all going to be going in when we put the new distributor in so it's easier to time. Otherwise you could really fudge some stuff up. So uh, make sure you take pictures with the cap on, um, with the wires on, and then with the cap off, where the rotor is pointing and everything. So you get it as close to where it was as you can and then we'll time it once we have it running and everything else. So then there's a, um, a bolt and clamp. Looks like this underneath there. Take that out. The distributor comes right off. And we need to end up saving that shaft because that'll need to go onto the new one. So when you take this shaft out, it's gonna have like this little C-clip on it but you just pull it out. It might be a little stuck, but you should just be able to pull it out. But that's the way it goes in, is with that C-clip up. So now I'll pull out the uh, new distributor and we'll throw it in there, and we should be getting ready to throw it all back together. All right, so I got the new distributor in. I think I have it kind of lined up 
how it would have been. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. We'll see if it starts. But um, we'll just keep that uh, bolt down there a little bit loose. That way we can easily play with it. So when you take the cap off, you have to unplug this. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that back in up under there. And then you see you've got a terminal for battery and a terminal for the tachometer signal. I'm not gonna be running that, my tachometer is broken. Um, so next part is to wire up a battery signal that's on with key on. All right, so I got it all wired up and I cleaned up a bunch of the wiring. I moved it all out of the way. I didn't try to cut as many wires as possible because I may have unplugged something that actually needs to be plugged in. So hopefully I didn't, but um, I've got a switched positive going to the battery terminal and we should be good to go there. I'll come through and tape all that up and clean it up once we actually get it running. So next, let's just slap that new carburetor on. Carburetor's on, put that fuel filter back on and reattach the fuel line. I need to plug this, um, but I plugged all the other vacuum ports for right now. Eventually I'll need to come in and hook up my choke, but also I live in Texas, so the choke is hardly ever needed. Um, so yeah, I'll plug that up and then hook up my spark plug wires and I guess see if it starts. All right, I had to play with the timing a little bit, but she started up. So I'm gonna let it warm up and then I'll start adjusting the timing some more and start trying to make sure the carburetor is doing okay. All right, there you go. I think I still have a vacuum leak somewhere. As you can see, it's kind of running a little bit rough, but it's not bad. I'm gonna do a vacuum test to see. I might have one coming out of the manifold gasket, but um, it's running good. And these are all the wires that are no longer needed. So I'll have to come through and figure out if I'm gonna cut those or bundle them up or do something with them. But you can see there's so much more space in here. Pretty happy with that upgrade. Thanks for watching.